Hi, this is Scott from Impossible Engine. I just want to do a quick tutorial on using RSMB uh, motion vector blur in Nuke. Here we are in Cinema 4D. I have a real quick scene here. I'm going to set up a simple dynamic scene just to get some action going. My render settings. I am writing out multi-pass file, an EXR file since I'm taking it into Nuke. I like using EXR files. Um, saving out an RGB and saving out a motion vector. Uh, a few things to note here. Linear workflow is turned on. If it's off, you need to do something else in Nuke to get your motion vector pass to work correctly, and I'll show you that too. Also, motion scale and the options, I like to turn that down a little bit. It defaults at like 128. Go into Nuke. I've already set up a simple script here. I'm shuffling out RGBA, and I'm shuffling out my motion vector pass. You can see right here, if I just add RSMB motion vectors and connect this up, nothing happens. The RSMB plugin likes to have an alpha channel. So you might think, okay, I'll just use the alpha channel that comes in. So you can copy the alpha, and copy the alpha channel from RGBA to the motion vector pass, and then connect my motion vector to that channel that is alpha. All right. So we've got some motion blur happening, but you'll notice it's not very good on the edges here. You can see right here. There's artifacts, and the reason that is, is because the motion vector pass is not anti-aliased, but our alpha channel is. So one way to go around that would be, instead of using the RGBA alpha channel, and this is what we've been doing as of late, is to add a primat or any sort of keyer that'll do the same thing. But um, we connect this up to our motion vector pass. And I select black as the background color. And that gives us an alpha channel that is not anti-aliased. And then instead of grabbing the alpha from RGBA, which is anti-aliased, we'll set it to that primat key. Our uh, motion vectors look correct now. So that was, a, that was a big help for us. It's still not gonna fix issues where you have overlapping objects for that. You end up having to do multiple passes and things. Um, you can try using the matrix node to kind of blur your motion vector pass, but in the end, it's just easier just to render out separate passes for foreground and background objects. So, I mentioned earlier needing to have linear workflow checked, um, or you have to do something different, and this is what happens. So, so this is a nonlinear pass, and when I connect this up. you'll see my motion blur breaks. And it took us a while to realize what was happening with this. Um, but basically what's going on is this motion vector pass needs to be linear. So the simple way to do this is to add a color space node after it. Or you can tell it to come out as sRGB and go in as linear. And what that'll do is it'll convert that pass into the correct color space for the motion vectors to work. And now we're back to where we were with nice motion vectors. Anyways, that's it. Um, real quick tutorial. Again, just wanted to share what we learned. Um, if anyone else is looking for it, and I'll post these files up below. All right, thanks.